The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Yeah, storms in the hill country rapidly making their way west. We've been covered in clouds all day long. Now, a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for parts of our viewing area. Meteorologist Adam Kasky kicking things off with a look at what's happening out there right now, Adam. Yeah, and outside right now, you saw the low clouds here in San Antonio, but really, uh, we don't have any activity in and around Bear County, at least not at this time, but give it a couple of hours and that action is going to be moving our way. There's a look at Doppler radar and you see the main activity still west and northwest of San Antonio and we're starting to see more development along the cold front and along this line of showers and thunderstorms and we do have some embedded severe thunderstorms, meaning the potential for wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour and maybe even some ping pong ball size hail in this storm and northern Medina County. So let's actually stop this radar loop and take a look at our hail product and basically this entire line here from Fredericksburg and eastern Gillespie County southward through Bandera. That's all considered severe with that potential for the large hail and the gusty straight line winds. Maybe a 60 to 70 mile per hour gust embedded within this activity. And you can see right here is where we have the primary little small hail cores. Some in northern Medina County near Bandera as well. That could be about quarter size. And then as you get into eastern Kerr County. Now the thing is with all this activity, this is going to continue to develop and develop southward as it gradually pushes eastward into San Antonio over the coming hours. So that's what we're monitoring and we do have the threat for severe thunderstorms even here in town. The primary threats are straight line winds and large hail. Though should that actually happen where we have those winds of maybe 60 to 70 or hail one to two inches in diameter should be fairly isolated, but we'll of course keep you updated here. I think the primary threat period is from now through about 9 or 10 PM. I'll be back with more information and talk about when you can expect this moving through your neck of the woods and what this means for the weekend coming up. All right, thanks, Adam. We'll see you then. Let's take a look at uh, tra Trans Guide out there. This is the camera at I-10 in Callahan. Things really smooth sailing, nothing more than just 6 o'clock congestion. But we are keeping an eye as these storms move into our area for any potential problems out there on the roads caused by this weather. We've taken a look really all around town. So far, so good. We'll let you know if that changes. Yeah, we've got you covered for the next 58 minutes at least. All right, missile attacks and growing tensions in Iran have prompted city and county leaders to address our local Muslim community. Today, local leaders visited a north side mosque to reassure members of the Muslim faith that they are welcome and should feel safe here in the Alamo City. Our Devin Clark shows us how the message of peace was delivered and how it was received. The late Senator Robert F. Kennedy once said the America's answer to the intolerant man is diversity. Amid unstable relations with Iran, today local Muslims received a strong message at the Muslim Children Education and Civic Center, the biggest mosque in our city. San Antonio is a safe place for anybody, no matter which book or which God you worship, and no matter what country you hail from or what language you speak or what color of your skin is. District 8 Councilman Manny Palaya says most Muslims in the Alamo City live and worship in his community, and says after events like the recent violent attacks towards American entities in Iraq, Muslims have expressed concern for their safety here. Whenever there's heightened tensions, these communities express uh, fear of violence and reprisals and hate crimes because it happens. Though leaders say it won't be tolerated, along with Pelayas and the city's mayor, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus and Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar came in a show of solidarity and support. You have leaders in your own community who are helping make that change every single day. Palaez is planning to visit other religious communities and address safety measures with them. He's urging anyone who feels that they are a target of hate to contact authorities immediately. Reporting in the newsroom, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Forgotten, then found. One of San Antonio's lost African-American cemeteries was a major discovery two years ago especially for the descendants of those buried there. There was a problem, though. The cemetery dating back to the 1800s was later surrounded by residential growth in the 1980s. So much so that Jesse Degollado says archaeologists believe some of the grave sites are beneath at least one backyard. At one time, the Hawkley Clay Cemetery was hidden by trees. Beyond it, a subdivision built in 1980, My where this man's grandmother once had her farm. 
She knew where everyone was buried out there with no markers. None were found even after the land was cleared. Yet each time he visits the site now. Well, I feel close to my, my family. Especially his father, Clay says, who was the last to be buried there, joining his three brothers. But he recalls seeing one grave in particular as a child in the northwest corner of the cemetery. But since then. That was a story shed sitting where his grave is. It's because after the subdivision went in, a nearly 100-foot fence across two backyards built by previous homeowners apparently fenced off part of the cemetery itself. Neither was available to speak on camera, but one neighbor told me he wasn't as concerned as his neighbor next door because the cemetery extends much further into his backyard. A certified land survey that shows the fence was built at an angle encroached on 861 square feet of the cemetery, the other more than 5,000 square feet. So now that homeowner says he may sue whoever sold him the house over two years ago. Oh, I, I feel sorry for him, yes, I really do. Clay says he thinks he speaks for the other descendants. No, I, I don't think I would, you know, like that, but, you know, right is right. Talks are now ongoing about removing that fence. In Northeast San Antonio, Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And now that Dream Week commemorating Martin Luther King Jr. has begun, one of the first events will be all about the Hockley Clay Cemetery, its history and its significance. The public is invited to a roundtable discussion at 10 a.m. tomorrow at Northern Hills Elementary School that also borders that cemetery. The trial of accused cop killer Otis McCain has been set for the spring, according to a scheduling order that was released this week. McCain is facing capital murder charges in the execution style slaying of veteran SAP detective Benjamin Marconi. He was shot to death outside police headquarters in November of 2017. The district attorney is seeking the death penalty in the McCain case that puts into play a series of pretrial hearings that begin in two weeks. They'll be followed by a lengthy jury selection process because the state is seeking the death penalty. Each prospective juror interviewed individually based on questionnaires they've completed. You know their feelings about the death penalty. You know the chances of them being able to qualify based upon their beliefs. Though not involved in the McCain trial, Judge Sid Harl has presided over death penalty cases in the past. He's also served as a prosecutor in those cases. If the scheduling order holds, the jury will begin hearing evidence in the McCain case on April 27th. A shootout between two groups on the east side today left two people injured. This happened on Canton Street near East Houston and Commerce. A woman was hit by a stray bullet while inside her own home, and a man who was targeted by that gunfire was also wounded. Katrina Weber tells us what suspects police are now looking for. Before the first police car had arrived, a car carrying at least one gunman already had disappeared. All that was left in the 700 block of Canton was the result of the violent exchange. A 57-year-old man lying outside a home, bleeding from gunshot wounds in his neck and upper body. Police say witnesses reported seeing several people pull up in a white sedan around 1130 last night, get out and start shooting at the home. They believe someone there then fired back. A stray bullet hit a 57-year-old woman who was in her own home across the street. The woman's husband told us off camera that his wife had been sleeping in a chair in the living room. He says she woke up to the sound of gunfire, and the minute she got to her feet, that's when the bullet tore through their house and hit her in her hand. Both she and the man who was shot were rushed to a hospital by ambulance. The woman's husband says she should be okay. But the bloody scene this morning outside the home that was targeted showed the man who was shot there suffered more serious wounds. Police told us he was in critical condition. At least early on, they were still trying to find out why, what caused the violence, and who was responsible. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 21-year-old Adam Gutierrez now facing charges for aggravated robbery, unauthorized use of a vehicle, and evading arrest. He's accused of stealing a victim's car at gunpoint. The arrest affidavit states the victim gave a ride to a woman who was meeting up with Gutierrez. When they arrived, that's when the robbery allegedly happened. A few days later, troopers spotted the suspects driving the stolen vehicle, or the suspect driving the stolen car. Gutierrez's bond set at $75,000. Learning new skills that can ultimately save your life one day. That was the case for two pro wrestlers 
who participated in a survival training at Lackland Air Force Base. KSAT photojournalist Robert Samaran was there to witness it all. Take a look. We give you the skills to succeed here. I never really like the thing that I'm going to be in, like in a place like this. We got geared up and uh, we threw those on to uh, go out and they, they were saying that Normally the students, or the trainees, they have to do four miles in an hour. And we were going at like, uh, I think like four miles at 20 miles a minute or something. And they were like, they have to go faster than that. They're not allowed to run. They're not allowed to run. Anybody can, can do this. Uh, it just fast takes, walk. you know, uh, some motivation, um, attention to detail, um, and everything that we teach here. You don't know, like really, what's like back to this curtain. You know, you see the uniforms and you see people like. You have to have a good foundation before but you can But all the discipline and all the, the work that they put on it, like every day, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Down first, away. There's the way we teach here, um, and that's kind of, it's just to be able to our, grade our students to a very specific standard. It's, it's things that are valuable, things that we can use in everyday life. You know, you take the cell phone away, you take the TV away. Um, these things are important. I can teach you how to build a fire here in San Antonio, Texas, but really what I'm teaching you is those principles to build that same fire in a jungle environment, in a desert environment, anywhere. So it's, it's really, it's global principles. I think on a different scale though, I think we appreciate it before, but you don't really get to see what's behind the curtain. And then to kind of jump in full force and just experience it all, you have a new respect for it. San Antonio District 5 City Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez plans to spend this year focused on seniors in the community. Our City Hall reporter Garrett Berger spoke with Gonzalez about her New Year's resolutions. He's been catching up with all the council members to talk about their goals for 2020. You can watch that full interview right now on our website at ksat.com along with the interviews of the other council members. The tensions between the United States and Iran continuing to rise. How new U.S. sanctions are not making things any better. And next at six, hear the story of a woman who struggled to get pregnant. Why doctors are blaming her blood sugar levels. Saying near the culprit. The joy of pregnancy can quickly turn to fear when multiple miscarriages happen, especially when those miscarriages have no explanation. But researchers discovered why a woman's blood sugar levels might be a factor Ursula Perry explains. As many as one in four pregnancies end in a miscarriage each year, and it can be heartbreaking for women. I felt kind of alone, even though I know my husband was there with me and my family knew about it, but I felt alone because they weren't experiencing what I was experiencing. After three miscarriages, Devani sought help from Dr. Chalis at the IVF center. He does understand what it's like to be in her shoes. My wife and I went through 10 years of infertility, 10 years of struggle, of watching my patients cry during the day and my wife cry at night. And finally, we resolved by adopting our five children. Some miscarriages can be caused in part by hormonal problems, older age and poor lifestyle like obesity and smoking. But 50% are unexplained. Now, a study published in the journal Fertility and Sterility says that insulin resistance might be the culprit. What we're seeing is that in patients who have abnormal blood sugar control, as well as pre-diabetes, and another word for that is insulin resistance, that may be associated with miscarriage. High insulin levels are toxic to the placenta. Dr. Trellis says that women who have had a miscarriage should be screened for blood sugar control. And if that's abnormal, we get that more uh, normalized with medication. Along with medication, women can adjust their diet to increase their chance of having a healthy baby. Although it's been known that there's that link between insulin resistance and miscarriage, this study is the first one to help us understand that insulin can actually severely damage placenta cells. The good news is that women at risk can take a common diabetes medication, metformin. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, active weather out there, just not 
that we can see from downtown San Antonio right now. It's just off to the west of us. Yeah. We're looking at Medina County, Bandera County, and in parts of the hill country there. And it's going to continue to move our way. This line keeps developing and it keeps pushing eastward. So it's going to pose a threat to us in the coming hours. We're expecting it to make it here to town. And of course, we'll be covering it. All right, so let's get started out there. Taking a look at Doppler radar. That's what it looks like outside right now. We're going to get back to this picture in just one second. Okay, I want to talk about the severe weather threats that we have lingering overhead through about the 9 10 o'clock hour. Primary threats this evening will be straight line winds and hail a moderate risk of both of those. How windy Well, maybe some isolated gusts of about 50 to 60 miles per hour and the potential for a few pockets of large hail, maybe one to two inches in diameter. There is the off chance of a brief tornado spinning up, but that's a pretty slight chance. Flash flooding way on the low end for a risk. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect for a good chunk of our viewing area, including San Antonio and Bear County. This is until 10 p.m. That just means conditions are favorable for the development of severe weather through 10 o'clock there. All right, we've had more development on the south end of this line here. Uh, basically, Uvalde County, southwestward Zavala County, some heavy rainfall, some lightning, and maybe loud down there, but nothing severe, at least not at the moment. This is right along the cold front that's moving into town, and this is what's triggering all this activity. And what we have here is basically a line of severe storms from just northeast of Sabinal all the way up to Sisterdale and that's that whole line there where we could have embedded areas of those straight line winds of maybe 60 miles per hour and the potential for large hail. So let's go back to our hail product. We like to look at this. Uh, it gives us a good idea where the hail cores are located and that I can even uh, kind of map out where they could move. But right now we basically just have this one uh, in northern Kerr County or northern Medina County. And that's moving into Bandera County. And should it stay on its you know, current track and speed and everything. Uh, let's let's uh, actually time this out for you here. And let's say that it keeps on its normal, you know, it's a current track and speed going to the northeast. It could affect Bandera. It could clip Bandera around 634, Pipe Creek roughly around 640. That's when it could at least be near you, not necessarily right over your area there, but that's a hail, hail core we are watching as it moves northeastward, maybe one to one and a half inch diameter hail associated with that. So you notice nothing here in San Antonio right now. It's all just knocking on our door just off to the west. The thunderstorms within this line are all moving northward, but the line is slowly propagating eastward and moving into town. So let's time it out for you. It's about to move into northwestern Bear County, okay, between six, between now and about seven, okay, 630 and seven. 7, 8 o'clock, moving through Bear County as well. Then it starts to slowly move eastward, 8 o'clock, probably Wilson, Carnes County, even Guadalupe County. And then by 9, 10 o'clock, our threat should really be wrapped up here in San Antonio. Maybe a few showers on the backside of it, but the severe weather should be done by then. And the main line will be in some of our eastern counties at that point. All right, so breaking it down for you, here's another way to look at it. Rain chances. The highest in the storm chances elevated through about 9 p.m. And then look at that 11 p.m. We drop it down to 20 percent. So definitely inconvenient for this evening. And if you do plan on venturing out, your time frame for this threat is through about 9, 10 o'clock. So keep that in mind. Really, this has nothing to do with our weekend weather in the sense that it's going to be quiet this weekend. Sunny temperatures in the 60s and very pleasant. So nothing to worry about this weekend. So the storm's moving what? The storm's out to the west, moving east, but they're not gonna be like a day long thing. No, this is gonna be a move in, move out situation. We'll keep you updated at seven o'clock. I'll be streaming live to our weather app as well. So stay with us there, if I'm not on air. All right, thanks Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, a lot of people talking about Lonnie Walker, mm -hmm. talking about LaMarcus. There's another spur that's heating it up. DeMar DeRozan shooting nearly 60% over the last nine games for the Spurs, and he's averaging just about 27 points per game. He needs to keep it up if the Spurs want to keep winning. They're at Memphis tonight. Plus two San Antonio boxers are ready to shine tomorrow. We got it coming up. Winners of two straight. The Spurs will play at the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. With the win, the Silver and Black would match their longest winning streak this season when they started off 3-0. The Grizzlies and Spurs are both on the fringe of the playoffs, making this an important contest. San Antonio is eighth in the West. Memphis is ninth, one game behind them. Guard DeMar DeRozan leads the Spurs in scoring this season, averaging 22 points per game. His last nine games, though, he's been on fire, shooting 60% from the field.
He's tough to guard, so um, when he's attacking downhill, um, creating for others, and then, I mean, it's opening the paint for him uh, in his mid-range post-ups. I mean, he scores so many different ways that uh, it's tough to focus on one thing, so um, he's been playing really well late and pretty much all year, so uh, he's going to keep going, and uh, we're going to feed off of him. Spurs and Grizzlies tip at seven. Highlights on the night beat. Time to meet Quincy Stewart, the new head football coach at Sam Houston High School. He was introduced this morning at the school. For the past two years, he served as linebackers coach at Duncanville High, which is a perennial state contender. Stewart played college ball at Louisiana Tech and is a five-year NFL vet. His wife is a Sam Houston alum. Stewart is more than ready to lead the Hurricanes. I'm ready to get started. I'm super excited about the opportunity. Uh, anytime you come into a, a, a historical program that has a lot of talent and, uh, and, and the buzz is excited and people want you there and, and you want the opportunity because, uh, like I said, this is my, not my second stint at this job, but my second time applying for this. So, I mean, this is, this, this is a gem for me. When I say a gem for me, I wanted this job several years before and, it, and God brought it back to me. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to get started. It looks good in that camp. Take you to the Alamo Dome for the weigh-in between Mexico's rising star Jaime Munguia and 35-year-old Irishman Gary O'Sullivan. The main event tomorrow night, a scheduled 12-round middleweight bout. Munguia is 34-0 with 27 KOs. O'Sullivan 30-3 and with 21 knockouts. On the undercard is San Antonio's very own Joshua Franco, who will face Jose Burgos in a 10-round super flyweight bout. Franco is 15-1-2 with 7 KOs. His opponent 17-2 with 14 wins by knockout. And tell me about your opponent. He's a tough guy from Mexico. Um, I don't know too much about him, but I know he has a good record. And, you know, people from Mexico, they come to fight. But um, I'm ready for whoever. Another bout on the undercard. We'll see San Antonio's very own Hector Tanahata Jr. He will face Juan Carlos Burgos, a scheduled 10-round USNBC lightweight fight. Hector, 18-0 with five knockouts, is the current USNBC lightweight champ. We asked him, will he have more nerves for this one since it's in his hometown? I think I'll just be more motivated. Um, I'm not going to listen to, you know, well, the crowd is going to be going crazy because it's my hometown, but uh, I know to win in, in this important fight, I'm going to have to listen to my corner. So I'm just being more, uh, more motivated than anything. Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions is helping put on this event. Weigh-ins like this pump up the former boxing great and winner of multiple world titles. It really does. It really does. I mean, people always ask me, uh, do you miss getting in the ring every single day of my life? I really do. I mean, I wake up in the morning and I think to myself, you know, maybe one more fight. Maybe I can run a few miles. Maybe I can go spar in the gym. Uh, um, yeah, every single day. Doors will open at 4 p.m. tomorrow with the first of the nine fights scheduled for 4.20 p.m. Congrats to Lee High School Boys Soccer for being ranked number one in the nation by USA Today United Soccer Coaches. Northeast ISD tweeting that. They jumped from six to number one in the land. They have a powerhouse they going here. That is so awesome. That is. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. Tensions continue to escalate between the United States and Iran as U.S. officials announce new economic sanctions against the Middle Eastern country. And adding to the escalation between the two nations, the U.S. now believes Iran likely shot down a Ukrainian airliner. Here's the latest. In the back and forth between the United States and Iran, the U.S. striking back, this time with economic sanctions. We will continue to apply economic sanctions until Iran stops its terrorist activities and commit that it will never have nuclear weapons. The sanctions come as a result of the Iranian attack on the United States and allied troops in Iraq in retaliation for a U.S. strike that killed Qasem Soleimani. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo continues to defend the rationale behind the attack against the Iranian general. We had specific information on an imminent threat, and those threat stream included attacks on U.S. embassies, period, full stop. But some members of Congress are still questioning whether the attack was truly imminent. Meanwhile, Iranians say sanctions will not bring them to the table. Either you want to have a dialogue or either you want to apply sanctions. And to add to the escalating tensions, new details on the plane crash in Iran that killed 176 people aboard a Ukrainian plane. We do believe that it's likely that that plane was shot down by an Iranian missile. When we get the results of that investigation, I am confident we, we and the world will take appropriate actions in response. Iran denies the claims and says they are inviting international partners, including the U.S., 
to take part in the investigation. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump could be kicking off soon. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she is preparing to send the impeachment articles to the Senate next week. She also says the House would not be voting today to name impeachment managers. That's a necessary procedural step before the articles are sent on to the Senate. Pelosi has withheld the articles as Democrats want to make sure witness testimony is allowed in the Senate trial. We are concerned that the senators will not be able to live up to the oath that they must take to have an impartial trial. She's trying to control the Senate. We'll have a trial. Everybody will get to vote for witnesses or not vote for witnesses. And the president will have his day in court. So will the House managers. The House passed two articles of impeachment last month, accusing President Trump of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he will make a decision on witnesses during the trial later. In travelers this holiday season may have noticed airports seem busier than years past. Well, the Transportation Security Administration says it screened nearly 44 million passengers between December 19th and January 5th. That's a 4% increase from last year. The agency says it kept checkpoints fully staffed by paying out overtime to employees. According to the TSA, 99.8% of all passengers waited less than 30 minutes in security lines. The economy added 145,000 new jobs last month. That's about 40,000 fewer than the average over the past three months. It was enough to keep unemployment at 3.5%, though, which maintains the historic low. November saw a massive boost to new jobs when General Motors workers returned after a strike. Wages grew at just 2.9% last year, but low inflation amplified the spending power of those modest gains. The junior achievement of South Texas helping students in our community have a better understanding of finances. Today, the grand reopening of the J.A. Finance Park. Young people will be able to study personal finance principles for 12 weeks, and at the end of it all, they get to be an adult for the day. The hope is that students leave with an understanding of how to best manage their money. They come away with new understanding of what it's like to pay bills, to be on a budget. Um, they understand why their parents can't buy them that iPhone 11 that they have been wanting um, and how to make budgeting decisions and spending choices based on their income. This is J.A.'s 11th year of providing the J.A. Finance Park program to middle and high school students in San Antonio and the South Texas area. Two Northside ISD students still enjoying an early morning surprise after their father returned from serving overseas. He was gone for seven months. Sarah Acosta and photographer AZ and Bermea were at Colby Glass Elementary today to capture this sweet reunion. Captain Abraham Acosta has been with the U.S. Army for 19 years. He's been deployed six times. Most recently, he's been in Turkey for the past seven months during the holidays, away from his family of five, his wife and three sons. Today, he finally got to reunite with his boys and give him a hug. I'm excited, nervous. We have a very, very, very special surprise this morning for one of our students. It's super exciting, especially the surprise component. I'm going to try to surprise them. Let's see if they recognize me. And we would like to welcome back Captain Acosta. Come on in, Dad. <laughs> Captain Acosta has a son in kindergarten, Abraham Acosta. Abraham, where are you? Come on up, bud. Come see Dad. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Hi, baby. I missed you, baby. And also, boys and girls, we have older brother Diego, who is here visiting us this morning, who is also getting to see Dad. Welcome back. Just see, see him every day. And it changed. I missed you in December. I know, baby. I miss you too in December. we be able to spend a lot of time with him and play and do their favorite thing. Minecraft. They love to play video games and so I'll be playing some video games with them. No matter what happens, they'll always be there for you and they'll always return somehow in some way. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. I love the homecoming they stories. They do not get old. Yeah, still to come, a new outer space discovery from NASA. We're going to tell you why a teenage intern is taking the credit.
And we'll tell you about the next Broadway production to come to the Alamo City. We have a preview of what you can expect on the news at 9. Welcome to the KSAT 12 Newsroom. We're on the set of the 9 o'clock news talking about what's coming up online tonight at 9. And we're going to talk about an important development in Converse that a lot of people are pretty happy about. That's right. This is the old Converse City Hall that is going to become a senior center there. Our Patty Santos explains how that project is going to unfold. She talks to some people who will hopefully use that in the future to explain the need for it and how this really all came to be and what it's going to look like in the future. And one of the interesting features we have at 9 o'clock, something called the Week in 210, and one of them includes a scooter company souring on SA. <laughs> yeah, Lime leaving San Antonio, one of the big three scooter companies that uh, the city agreed to work with. They're now out. The Week in 210 is all about taking a look back on Fridays at some of the biggest stories that made headlines. Uh, another one of those things, draining the river walk. That was a big one uh, this week as well. So we'll take a look back at what all has happened over the last Always week. interesting to see what they find yes. at the bottom. <laughs> of the San Antonio River downtown. We're also going to check out trending. And I think I know RJ a little bit. RJ walks, <laughs> RJ Marquez walks us through what's trending on KSAT.com, but this. He got personal. We were not expecting yeah. this. Yeah. Grace and Frankie, I got to say, this show uh, has really kind of stolen my heart. I, at first, I was really? like, I really am not going to be watching Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, but they are super funny. And yeah. RJ, I just love <laughs> that you watch Grace and Frankie. I am as shocked as everyone else in this newsroom, yes. <laughs> Grace and Frankie. Yeah. I don't think RJ's in the demo that that show is aimed at, I, but. They have clearly missed out on uh, targeting the folks like RJ. All right. That's, he's all about it. Find out what else we learn about RJ and also what's coming to Netflix and Hulu and all that good stuff. Yeah, all right. Let's check out the weather right now. We have Storm Chaser that's out and about, Adam Kasky, Justin Horn, and more. Let's go to those guys now. Yeah, this is a view from the Storm Chaser. They're off I-10 and about Fair Oaks Ranch Parkway. They're looking to the northwest, and they've had a bit of a light show thus far right now at this moment. Now we're not seeing a whole lot of lightning off in the distance, but they're right on the edge of the activity that's moving into town. I'll be back with more details on when you can expect this line of storms that's headed our way and when it clears out of here, what that means for the weekend coming up. <laughs> In the buzz today, a teenager made an out of this world discovery during an internship with NASA. The 17 year old is being credited with discovering a new planet some 1300 light years from Earth. The teen was sifting through data from NASA's transiting exo sur exoplanet survey satellite. What he thought was an anomaly in the data turned out to be an undiscovered planet. He's going to have some big thing. That's the big thing to put on your resume, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Discovered a planet. <laughs> it's nearly seven times the size of Earth at orbiting two stars, and it is the first time a planet orbiting two stars has been found through the NASA satellite. All right, calling all muggles and wizards. The largest Harry Potter store in the world is heading to New York City. A massive three-story Wizarding World of Harry Potter store will open this summer in the heart of Manhattan. Warner Brothers says the store will include brand new products that have never been sold before, including a new line of magic wands. Ah, the store will also feature interactive experiences, plenty of photo ops, Warner is calling the Wizarding World of Harry Potter a flagship store, the first of its kind. Hmm. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. Yeah. Chocolate lovers unite. Today you get to celebrate the bittersweet version of your favorite treat. January 10th is National Bittersweet Chocolate Day. This kind of chocolate is defined as dark chocolate with less sugar and more chocolate liqueur than semi-sweet chocolate. Yeah, a 2015 study shows dark chocolate has a wide array of medicinal benefits, including support for heart health. Researchers say it even has the potential to help fight infectious diseases. Bittersweet chocolate day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, a different kind of day in the weather center, that's for yeah. sure. We've got a line of storms that's developing and pushing eastward already. It has some uh, history of severe weather with some large hail uh, and the potential for some gusts, you know, 
up to 60 miles per hour. So we're tracking it. Justin Horn, he is out there. We'll get to him in just one minute. First, I want to talk about the primary risks as we go through the rest of this evening. Here in San Antonio, it's quiet right now, but through time here, the next few hours, this line is going to be moving in. It's just about into Bear County and it's slowly pushing its way eastward. Straight line winds, moderate risk along with hail, but they are the primary risks when you break it all down for this scenario. So gusts, maybe 60 miles per hour in a few spots. Hail potentially one to two inches in diameter. That's a possibility in a few isolated locations as that line moves through. Tornado threat is not big. It's not zero, but it's not big and we're not expecting flash flooding. So here's a look at the radar and you see this flashing orange polygon. That is a new severe thunderstorm warning and that is just north of Bear County that does not encompass Bear County. We'll get to that in just one second here, but we've had more uh, developments on the south side of this line. The sky is lit up Sabinal to Hondo and moving toward Castroville, Rio Medina. You're right on the edge of that right now. That is not considered severe, just very loud and a lot of lightning with some heavy rain embedded, maybe some pea size hail. What we do have is a new severe thunderstorm warning here, uh, basically eastern Kendall County through a good portion of Kamal County. This does include the Canyon Lake area, and this should be for winds of 60 miles per hour, potentially isolated winds of 60 miles per hour, maybe some uh, hail about one inch in diameter, potentially with this part of the line as it moves eastward as it gets toward Canyon Lake. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop this and I'm going to I'm going to do the uh, storm fan for you. Just to give you some timing on this really quickly here and then we can jump into uh, Justin, but this is just the newest one. So we're going to draw this out for you as it moves eastward. Oh, one more time. Draw this out for you as it moves eastward. There we go. Canyon Lake, we clock it at about 734 PM. All right, we do have Justin Horn. Joining us in the Storm Chaser, he is just outside Fair Oaks Ranch. What are you seeing now? I don't basically just uh, quiet conditions, at least at the moment. Uh, we're watching the lightning off in the distance. That, that line of storms is about five miles away from us or so, and we're just about to get an outflow boundary. Winds are calm as it stands right now, but winds are going to pick up pretty significantly here, I'd say within the next two to three minutes. So that'll be telling on what these storms sort of have to offer. But uh, we can see the lightning off in the distance. It's going to be electrical. It's going to be loud as these storms move through. But we're going to be out and about if uh, these storms should uh, get severe or put down some hail. We'll be there to let you know where that's happening and uh, we'll keep you updated. Adam. All right, thank you, sir. And uh, Justin will stay out and about. Here's this exact location, by the way, right there, just south of the Kendall County line. And he's going to continue to monitor, monitor the situation for us out on the roads. Here's another timeline for you. Fair Oaks Ranch, you'll be getting this fairly soon, probably within the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. Bull Verde, probably closer to about 7.20 p.m. And these are just estimates you see here on the screen. For, as for New Braunfels, probably a little closer to 8 p.m. So there's still a lot of time here, several hours for this to push through. And as it does, it's going to continue to change and evolve as it moves. One good thing it has done here is given some decent rainfall totals, parts of Bandera County and even into Kendall County. Right now we've had estimates of one and a half to nearly two inches of rain. So that's good. That's one nice thing about this line moving through. Unfortunately, it could come at a cost with the severe weather and the newest warning that we have in Kamal County. All right, so there's a look at the current radar. Let's talk about what's going to be happening here over the next couple of hours. It slowly moves through Bear County, 8, 9 o'clock. It's starting to be east of town, and that's when our eastern counties will be threatened by the potential for severe storms. Gonzales, DeWitt, uh, that's when you'll see that move eastward. And then finally by about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, the threat's out of here. And then we just enjoy a beautiful weekend. All right, so a good weekend in store. Take a look at your forecast. Sunny and in the 60s. A <clears throat> little bit of a breeze on Saturday, but overall pleasant. And nothing to worry about as we go through this upcoming weekend. And by the way, KSAT Weather Authority app, I'll be streaming live on it starting at seven o'clock to keep people updated. That's one of the great new features with it. So we got you covered on air, online, on the app. Uh, in the palm of your hand. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to stick with the weather situation right now and I have a question for meteorologist Adam Kasky. As we look at this storm, it looks as if it's slowing down a little bit as far as it moving 
from west to east. Well, I'll say one thing. It's uh, not necessarily slowing down, but it's not moving as quickly as we anticipated. So it's just kind of taking its time as it moves eastward. We were expecting it to really already be moving into more of San Antonio, but one benefit of that is it drops more rainfall, some needed rainfall. Unfortunately, we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning. We're looking at Medina County here, likely some large hail embedded within this cell. I'd like to focus on that more, but I need to get to this um, activity that we have in uh, basically Kendall County here. I'm going to move this over because we have a new tornado warning for parts of Kendall County, and this is northeastern Kendall County, just east of Sisterdale. And that's an area where we have some rotation detected by the radar. So it's a radar detected spin within that storm and that's pushing eastward. So I'm going to be back with more information on this and we're going to cover this more in depth. And again, we will be streaming live to our app. So we'll be definitely online and in the palm of your hand and keep you updated as all of this moves into town. All right, here's, here's a look at that tornado warning. This is in eastern Kendall County, near Sisterdale, between Sisterdale and Candelia. See this area where I'm gonna denote right here with the arrow? That's what we're watching where we have radar detected rotation and the potential for a tornado uh, to be formed here. So Candelia, time to seek shelter in an interior room. You're going to keep us updated on air and online the very latest. Yep. And on your as, app a, as a matter of fact, we're going to sign 